Welcome to River Tales. River Tales is a 30-minute program that will introduce you to fascinating people, take you to interesting places, and enlighten you on important events that happen in our region. River Tales is sponsored by Southeast Missouri Hospital. On this edition of River Tales, the Show Me Center is home to this region's largest concert venue. From presidents to monster trucks, the Show Me Center is still attracting the big names and the big crowds. If you've ever wondered how the logo was printed on your t-shirt, we have the answer with a visit to Horizon Screen Printing. KFBS 12 in Cape Girardeau has made it easier for us to see the local sporting events with their webcasts. We'll take a look behind the scenes of how these productions are put together. And we finish our show with a delicious dessert from My Daddy's Cheesecake. Stay tuned to River Tales. At Southeast Missouri Hospital, we deliver nearly twice as many babies as any place else in Cape. That means Maggie was born without a care in the world. We were the first in the area to establish a neonatal intensive care unit. That means Nick and his dad are already having their man-to-man -man talks. We're the region's first and only hospital to achieve national magnet recognition for excellence in nursing. That means Patrick and Peggy are used to the royal treatment. Why do the people of Southeast Missouri Hospital work so hard to be leaders in childbirth? Because of what it means to the people who come from outside our hospital. In 2009, we achieved our second Health Grades Outstanding Patient Experience Award and ranked in the top 10% nationally. That means Carly and her mom are feeling very comfortable in the world. Visit Southeast Missouri Hospital on the web or call our health line. See what makes us the region's most trusted source for childbirth care. For over two decades, the Show Me Center has hosted some of the biggest events in this region. What the public doesn't always see is the quick turnaround that is sometimes necessary to make things run smoothly. From a commencement to a dinner, from a basketball game to a concert, the Show Me Center staff is always on the move. Opening their doors to the public in 1987, the Show Me Center has long been serving the Cape Girardeau community and beyond with entertainment. I spoke with a couple of key staff members and they told me how they keep things running so smoothly. Hey Randy, it's Shannon. I just wanted to follow back up with you and see if maybe that had been applied to a different show and maybe we were behind somewhere else. Shannon Buford, marketing director for the Show Me Center, never has a slow day. His job essentially begins the moment a promoter calls. We instantly begin the whole process, which is going through finding out what the show is looking for, uh, who the show is going to appeal to, and then basically trying to figure out what outlets we have local here in Cape Girardeau, as well as the remainder of Southeast Missouri, uh, Western Kentucky, and Southern Illinois, and trying to pull all that in so that I can provide the promoter or whatever event it may be, all the information that I can possibly give them on how to effectively advertise their event. David Ross, director for the Show Me Center, was originally hired to open the building. And now, over two decades have passed and Ross is still running the show. As the director, uh, ultimately the buck stops at my desk. Uh, I like to tell people I'm the head of the complaint department, but. Uh, we have other departments and people uh, that actually uh, handle a lot of that work and so what I try to do is provide a direction, uh, a vision for what we want to do or motivation for employees when things kind of get into a bind. I do a lot of the booking, uh, a lot of relationships with uh, outside promoters, people in the industry and then internally with the, with the university um, try to run that red tape trail. The location of the Show Me Center plays a huge role when getting the big celebrities to play a show. Located between St. Louis and Memphis, it makes it easy for the big entertainment to stop by. We're very lucky in the shows that we get here. Um, we get a lot of shows that sometimes 
would never look at playing, you know, smaller markets. I mean, they're really hitting the big, huge guns. And a great example of that would be something like Tool, even Brad Paisley, Carrie Underwood. They play a lot of really, really big arenas. We've been very lucky and very blessed that we have uh, people that have been in this game for a long time working here as our director or assistant director who help book these shows. And by having them here and the contacts that they have, we bring in some of these great shows. And there's nothing more exciting uh, than getting to see a concert here at the Show Me Center. From country to rock and roll concerts, the Show Me Center doesn't stop there. They also bring in a plethora of events, anything from graduation to the dirt turning monster trucks. Pretty much run the gamut. Uh, we'll run it from just small company uh, meetings in our meeting rooms to big corporate gatherings where they'll have a big banquet or an award ceremony. We also have the car auction. But I mean, we can go from classic rock to country to classical to a play to a visit from a local celebrity all within the same week it seems like and it's pretty amazing and that's that's really what gives us the biggest sense of accomplishment is whenever we do one of those weeks where we're going from just event to event to event and to see how it just completely transforms. Planning events require tedious work from all ends of the spectrum. Buford speaks highly about the operations team at the Show Me Center. We have multiple uh, operations guys that are in here and our full-time guys, if you ever see them running around in a red shirt, those guys are some of the biggest workhorses here. But we'll have a crew of about 12 guys out there um, working as quickly as they possibly can to get the basketball floor up, get the next show in, whether or not they're setting for a concert or a classic car auction. Uh, they're out there doing the work as fast as they can possibly do it and then what they'll have to do is after they've taken it all up and that event ends they'll most likely have to lay that floor right on back down. The Show Me Center strides on making a guest visit a friendly experience. We're going to welcome guests into our house and so from the time that you come into the parking lot or you buy a ticket at the ticket office we want to show kindness, we want to show hospitality, uh, if somebody has questions, we want to take the time to answer those and just welcome them in just like you would welcome somebody into your living room or your house. We're doing the same here. At the end of the day, though, you get to think back on all the people that you got to see out in the stands that, you know, it may have been, A, the first time they've ever seen their, you know, their favorite artist live. And those are the ones that you know are excited and you can just tell. And there's sometimes you can just walk in and you don't even have to hear anything or see anything. You can just tell. There's actually almost like a feeling. And I, you can't really explain it at all, but there's, there's nothing quite like that as you walk in and you know that you had at least one small hand in all of this and you see how excited everybody is. It makes you feel fantastic about what you do for a living. The staff at the Show Me Center rarely gets a rest. Even when you're headed home after experiencing a great event, they're still hard at work getting ready for that next event for you to enjoy. Horizon Screen Printing in Cape Girardeau will design, create, and print your logo on just about anything. We visit with Glenn Reeves about the process of screen printing. Have you ever wondered where your embroidered polo or printed t-shirt comes from? Or better yet, how it gets made? If so, look no further than Horizon Screen Printing Company serving downtown Cape Girardeau for 27 years. My name is Glenn Reeves. Uh, my wife and I own this company. Uh, my wife started this business in 1981, and uh, she's in our house just kind of as a hobby. Uh, she did some Girl Scout shirts. We have a promotional products division, which sells things such as drinkware, pens, specialty type items. We have an embroidery and art department, which does the, does the embroidery, that if you have a design, um, upstairs that has to be dig digitized and you digitize by putting wherever stitch goes and once that digitizing is done then it's installed in our system and then from there on in you can embroider and uh, then we have a printing operation downstairs which includes uh, two automatic printers and three manual printers which does screen printing. The screen printing process begins in the exposure room. 
It is here where the artwork is cut out and taped on the emulsion screen. A machine then sucks all of the air out and holds the screen firmly against the glass. A high UV light is then exposed to the screen which in turn burns the image directly onto the screen. With everything now cured and hardened, the screens are then pressure washed blowing out all the excess debris, leaving behind the finished screen. Horizon Production Manager, Grant Adams, takes us through the process of manual screen printing. On the manual rotary press, is each color is separated onto its own individual screen. He's gonna lay down the first one, and as it goes around, he's gonna pull the flash over the top, the flash heating element is cooking at about 400 degrees. It's going to get the shirt to about 300 degrees, which is almost enough to cure the ink, but not quite. It's enough that it'll take all the tackiness out so that when it's time to lay the next screen down, he can lay that down and print over the shirt without pulling up the previous ink. So on this machine, we can basically do that up to eight times for eight different colors. Then he's going to load it onto the dryer here. It's going to come through the gas dryer, and the gas dryer is cooking at about 475 degrees so that we can get the temperature of the ink to exactly 320 degrees as it kind of coasts through there. When it gets to 320 degrees, this, this ink, which is basically like a liquid plastic, is going to turn to a solid plastic and completely bond with the material of the shirt so that it doesn't ever wash out or anything like that. An easier way to screen print is by using an automatic printing machine. This machine is only a couple years old. It has 14 platforms to load shirts on and 12 heads for different colors or flash units. The shirt being made by this machine is actually using a four color process ink and with the way the art is set up, the inks are very thin which allows them to easily blend together. So with those four colors, they're actually able to get about 20 different colors to show up on the shirt. The process it's very similar to what the manual machine did. However, this one can pump out a lot more shirts in a lot less time. Southeast Missouri Hospital is the only hospital in the region to be named a Blue Distinction Center for cardiac care by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. That means we got to spend our 30th anniversary together. And we're looking forward to our 40th. We achieved the Health Grid Specialty Excellence Award in cardiac surgery. That means I'll be here to meet my first grandbaby. Southeast achieved a five-star rating from Health Grades for coronary bypass surgery. That means a lot more birthdays with our kids and our grandkids, too. Why do the people of Southeast Missouri Hospital work so hard to be leaders in cardiac surgery? Because of what it means to the people who come from outside our hospital. Visit Southeast Missouri Hospital on the web or call our health line. Understand your risks for heart disease and see what makes us the region's most trusted source for cardiac surgery. Traditional television is still a mainstay for most people, but the internet has opened many more doors.
KFBS, the local CBS affiliate, is using the internet for webcasting local sports programming. They've had great success with their webcasts and have heard from people all over the world who have watched various sporting and cultural events. If you have gone to a local sporting event in Southeast Missouri or Southern Illinois recently, you may have seen a broadcast crew taping the event. This is the KFVS 12 crew filming what is a newer technology called webcasting. Uh, basically what a webcast is, is a, is a live, the way we do it, is a live video stream of uh, any type of event. Uh, we cover a range of events, uh, a lot of Southeast Missouri State University activities, men's and women's sports, high school sports, uh, football, basketball. We've done a variety of parades. Uh, we've done some other uh, ceremonies at Southeast. Our corporate owners are Raycom Media, and uh, they've been pretty progressive over the years. And um, they said about three years ago they wanted to um, expand platforms for delivery of content. And one of the ways that they thought would be good is uh, webcasting, which is basically TV on the internet. And so they uh, gave the option to six of their 35 or 40 stations to, uh, to be guinea pigs, if you will, for, for this project. And we raised our hand because uh, in a market like this, we saw the value of being hyper-local and uh, providing uh, more local content to more people um, that we just can't do as well with our uh, main KFES on-air platform. So uh, one thing led to another and we pretty much embraced it and it's grown all three years up to where we're scheduled to do uh, 75 or 80 events this season. So the advantage of this is that while we're sort of landlocked as a traditional CBS affiliate on Channel 12, um, we're not restrained um, at all on what we deliver on the internet's website. Uh, so, you know, before the website, if we were going to show a special local event, um, we would have to preempt something, CBS or, or one of our syndicated programs. I mean, we do a lot of local news, but that wouldn't, that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, now, we don't have to prevent, preempt anything. We can present our traditional CBS lineup and syndicated lineup and local news and still uh, on a whole different platform provide for those that want to see Sykeston play Poplar Bluff football in a week or two, uh, they can watch that uh, without interrupting the schedule of anybody else. So uh, it's, it's the advantage is uh, from a content delivery standpoint, we are better than we were because we can do it more and better and more often and reach more people. Two, stand by three, hold it. Stand by three. Ryan, something else. In order to do a webcast, the KFVS crew requires more than just a camera and the crew. They fill two vans with the equipment required to do the production. Uh, when we go out on an event, which would, could be anywhere in the Heartland, we take two vans, one full of crew, the other one full of three kits here, which you see in front of you, one, two, and three. We also have uh, three reels of cables to connect all our cameras to our main hub, which is right here. And the main hub is protected. It's got two uh, lids on each side that come off and houses everything we do. And we also have our audio board, which hooks up to our announcers, also hooks up to our cameras for camera mics, so you know we can hear people talking out in the field, you know, football players, baseball players, you know, yelling. Uh, we also have two computers. One is a primary, one is a backup. Uh, we usually use a primary and don't have difficult with, difficulty with it. Our backup is used just in case our primary goes out and we need it because it's hard to get another computer on location sometimes. On the back of this is where all our connections go into. We have our uh, four cameras complete with audio and intercom for each of those four cameras. We have our uh, four input mics for announcers and Nats mics. We also have program in and out for our monitors and we also have video in and out for DVD players and go back to the announcers so they can see what's going out live on the air. Our second uh, box here is for 
all our monitors. These We have three of these monitors, one for the answer and two for the director of program and preview monitor. We also have our computer monitor, which our IT coordinator sets up and you know sets up our signal over the air and starts the webcast and gets all the configuration set up just right. In our third kit, we have our four cameras um, and four tripods. Uh, we use anywhere from two to four cameras on event. It just depends on you know how fast the event moves. As such as football, we have three cameras. Um, soccer, we have two. It just depends on how much action is taking place and how many you know you think you're going to need for the webcast. So, in essence, all this equipment and our crew and our personnel and our IT you know, coordinator and supervisors, we're all out there, we're producing one product, we're making it look good. You know, when you watch it on TV, it's all seamless and flowing like a you know, professional sporting event, and that's what we strive here at KFS 12. We strive for professionalism, you know, to put out a good quality product, and all this equipment and behind the scenes is what helps it take place. Well, you're going to see a lot of people involved in it. It's the, it's with the technology. Technology is getting um, easier um, and better, and you're going to see more and more people involved. I think you're going to see radio groups involved and newspaper groups. Um, uh, anybody that wants to be better at delivering content to people, um, I think you're going to see it. But then, so we want to position ourselves as as sort of the leader on that, um, and we've created partnerships uh, along the way. Um, with other media, uh, it's worked out real well. Uh, you know, we don't want to we don't want to be selfish with it. Uh, we want to we want to um, uh, enter in any sort of arrangement that will allow us to better deliver more content to more people. And if that means um, involving traditionally competitive media uh, such as radio, well, you know, we're going to look at that. We're going to probably do it because it just makes sense. If it's win for them, win for us, and most importantly, it's a win for the. Uh, consumers, content consumers. I'm a full-time wife and mom and I also work as a substitute teacher. You can see why it seems impossible to get a college degree, but with Southeast Missouri State University's regional campuses, it really is within my reach. I can get a degree without leaving my hometown and that's important when you have a family. Getting a college degree isn't easy, but Southeast makes it convenient. My Daddy's Cheesecake was started in Cape Girardeau, but now has customers all over the country. This bakery has a nationally recognized dessert that will tempt anyone's taste buds. My Daddy's Cheesecake was founded by Dr. Tom Hardy. He had a love for baking, and he had a dinner party one evening where all the friends brought cheesecake. His was by far, of course, the best, and his friends encouraged him to start making cheesecake. So he did it out of Tom's house and where he started making cheesecake and selling them to local restaurants. His daughter took cheesecake to the restaurant she worked in, and as she waited on all of her customers at the end of their meal, she would say to each one of them, I want you to try a piece of my daddy's cheesecake. Other waiters and waitresses picked up on the jingle, the name stuck, and we became my daddy's cheesecake. My Daddy's Cheesecake were a fast, casual dining facility. We understand people are under time restraints for lunch, so we tried to get people in and out very quickly, but we don't sacrifice our quality of food. We have a very high standard for our cheesecake. We want all our sandwiches from our omelets, sandwiches, quesadillas to be equal or better than our, even our cheesecake. concept here at My Daddy's Cheesecake is we're a bakery cafe. We're a retail but also a wholesale company. We wholesale throughout the United States but we also have a retail store where we sell bakery items plus food, sandwiches, soups, salads, uh, the whole works like that. So it's uh, 
uh, something for everyone. The types of breakfast and lunch items we have varies. Uh, we have a country style breakfast with biscuits and gravy, um, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, very good omelets. Lunch items consist of um, deli sandwiches that are grilled and prepared, soups, salads. Our various types of catering are box lunches. We have buffet catering trays. Um, those consist of croissant sandwiches. Um, and with your box lunch, you get your sandwich, chips, cheesecake, and a, and a bottle beverage. Uh, the average amount of cheesecakes that we bake on a daily average is around 105 at this time of year. Uh, usually the average cheesecake, the six inch cheesecake, uh, bakes in about an hour and 15 minutes, you know, at a certain temperature, a certain low temperature. And the uh, average nine inch cheesecake bakes about an hour and 30 minutes. Basically on the cheesecake, the process usually starts with uh, uh, the mixture of you know the sugar and sour cream uh, depending on the cheesecake you make it, maybe it requires a lemon juice maybe it requires uh, a two percent you know, whipping cream uh, and, and of course your Philadelphia cream cheese uh, that is actually your starting process uh, and then after that it'll go into what we call our monster or our processor and it'll get mixed up, you know, mix it up in a total probably of around five to six minutes. And from that process, uh, it'll go through our, uh, what we call our dispenser. Um, we have there different settings on our dispenser for different sizes of cheesecakes. Um, like um, our most popular flavors is berry, classic, forbidden fudge, and turtle. Um, so uh, on that process, uh, we'll dispense them and put them in pans that's got either a graham cracker crust or an Oreo base. And so we'll put a certain amount of batter actually in the pans. And then we'll first put them in our conventional oven, you know, at 275 degrees for approximately, like I said a while ago, um, on six inch, approximately our 15 minutes and our nine inch approximately around an hour and 30 minutes. Okay. We pull them out of the oven, let them cool on the floor at room temperature. And then once they're cool, then we'll slide them into a walk-in cooler and let them chill down overnight okay. until they're ready the next day to start decanning. Okay. It's about the process. come in to visit my daddies, we want them to take away a great experience. We offer, uh, like I said, a vast array of items that they can buy. We have quality products. Um, we have great service. So when they come in, they can enjoy the atmosphere, great food, great desserts, and go away with that experience uh, that uh, they want to come back and see us again. In 1977 in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 150. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference.
Each month, we will take this journey where there are many places to go. There are many interesting people to meet and so many new things to see. Join us again on River Tales.